I say something that bugs me about Lethal Weapon? So, I'm, I'm a big fan of the Lethal Weapon franchise. Obviously, I grew up with it. Okay. Uh, I, I was probably like 10 or 11 when the first one came out. In the first movie, well, uh, Mel Gibson is this d- deeply troubled karate badass mm-hmm. who does okay. martial arts constantly, <laughs> right? Okay. He has like this huge karate fight with Gary Busey in the rain. Yeah. There's all kinds of karate. There's all kinds of karate. In the second and the third and the fourth movies, he's just a dude. Yeah. When did he stop kicking? I don't know. It's a good question. They just abandoned how he was like a troubled badass yeah. to just make him a troubled guy later on. But they just completely and totally walked away from the fact that he could, he could fuck dudes up. Mm-hmm. They sort of touch on that in four. Like, he's not a karate badass, but, like, part of his arc is, like, I don't have this shit in me anymore. Right. Unfortunately, he didn't have it. He didn't have it in two and three either. <laughs> he did not. No. Are you guys watching my screen, by the way? Oh, I'll watch. Okay. I'll throw it on. Thank you. Watch stream. Watching. Cool. Why am I watching your stream? Oh, we're looking at the clock. Oh, oh I see. Oh. 48. We're just having a watch. 50, 51, 52, 53, 54. Five, oh. six, seven, eight. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> wow. Uh-oh. Wow, that is wow. definitive. Uh-oh. Wow. That's fascinating. What wow. Happened? When do you cut it? When does this episode start? <laughs> oh. We were watching Eric's stream, which showed his clock. You showed up a second early. You did. He was right. He was right. He's been right. Uh, according to his time. <laughs> I was looking at my <laughs> clock on, mm-hmm. on my bottom right of my desktop. So I was, you know, clicking at exactly three on my GPS. And then when I glanced my bottom right, it still said 2.59. And then, and then it instantly changed, though. Very interesting. So I might be one second out. Interesting. You're saying that that was the definitive one second? Yeah. You've been showing up one second early for a while now, dude. And I don't 163 it. episodes. Now, you, you hate people showing up early, Gavin. Are you okay with one second early? How do you feel about yourself? I think one second is a nice grace period to have. Okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Convenient. <laughs> you know, you don't get up anyone's ass with one second, are you? No. You're not getting up anyone's ass. <laughs> I guess it depends, right? Like, the Olympics, a second is pretty big. Running the 40... If you're like a prospect, a second could be big. Yeah. Speed could runs. Heated. Speed runs. Yeah. People will spend a year shaving off a second. That's true. <laughs> Dodging bullets. <laughs> <laughs> Not many people have dodged bullets. Yeah. Has anyone actually dodged a, a bullet successfully? Like it yeah. was going to hit them and then they moved. Yeah. Dude, uh, Nemo uh, Williams, The Adventure Begins. Watch it. Oh, he did that. Neo did that. Jet Li does that in Lethal Weapon 4. There's a few of them. Jet Li dodges a bullet so his brother can take it, which is like rough. That's a rough dodge. That That's is maybe rough. the worst dodge. I feel like you're only getting it done from a from like a sniper. Oh, no. You need, you need a lot of distance between you and the gun to actually dodge the bullet, I think. Oh, I disagree strongly. I know most of the dodges I can think of don't involve a sniper. That's true. I'm looking at yeah, pistols. All... I'm looking at assault rifles. I think they're all bollocks. Oh, you think Remo Williams is bollocks? How dare <laughs> you, sir? You've obviously never seen Remo Williams. You would not think that he was bollocks after you watched that film. I haven't <laughs> seen Remo Williams. <laughs> I wonder how many of our, hey, our audience it's, has. It's Fred like, Ward, man. It is Fred uh, Ward. I love Fred Ward. Yeah, he's great. He was, he's fucking awesome. He was Remo Williams, Gavin. <laughs> An American hero. Well, now I'm in. Hello and welcome to another episode of the <laughs> Face Podcast. Uh, this is episode 164. You are welcome, Eric. He was losing his shit in the chat because we hadn't done the intro yet. My name is Jeff Ramsey. With me, as always, Andrew Panton, Gavin Free. Uh, episode 164, I think I already said that. I got nothing. What do you guys want to talk about? You have no- I feel like you have the most of us here. We haven't no. talked in a little while. Well, I You've haven't been... talked to you in just as long as you haven't talked to me. 
I know, but you've been you. on some some <laughs> recorded adventures I don't since know. we've last spoken. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what about, I'm talking about? Why don't we talk about your recorded adventures? What have you been doing the last two weeks, Andrew? I've missed you. Well, listen, I've been in the lab, okay? My, my stuff isn't as interesting. Do you want to go to my stuff immediately, what I've been working on? I mean, if you had two weeks in the lab, I would have got straight uh, to yeah, that. Yeah, that seems pretty fucking important. I've had a little bit in the lab. Listen, we're still prototyping. There's still some things in the lab that are yet to come out. But, <laughs> but last time we talked, Jeff, you brought up a great innovation. You brought okay. up a, a, a possible change in the way we view the world, and I was inspired. I was inspired, and I wanted to, to see your vision. I wanted to really get into the mind of what you're doing, so I made a prototype. This, okay. is, this is the first prototype, as you can see. Oh, whoops. I accidentally... We cancel that out. Oh, no, still went live. <laughs> that was a different thing. Uh, I wait. sent... <laughs> wait. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is going on? That what? was that was that was an accident. That was a really stupid yeah. guitar I saw that I clipped. Uh. I wish I could claim I prototyped the ball sack guitar. That was just in my camera roll and I fat thumbed it. Uh, the real <laughs> prototype. I tried to cancel it out before it went through, but it, it made it. <laughs> That is the fork prototype. I will take <laughs> any question. Can we, yeah, can, well, yeah. first question, what's up with the ball sack guitar? Yeah, I, <laughs> Andrew, I gotta say, I don't have any questions about the fork, but what's up with $3,500 seems a little It's a pricey. lot, right? Well, that's because it's yeah. beautiful. It is beautiful. <laughs> it's a unique instrument. I think I saw that in a local subreddit, and I thought it was absurd, so I clipped it. All right, I it screenshotted it to send to Is this still for sale? I don't know. I didn't look at anything past the image of it, but that's a <laughs> beautiful ball sack guitar made of fern wood, I believe. It's got um, J Terser pickups and hardware. Yeah. Dang. If only Dang. Nick said it could go in the museum. It'd be great for the museum. That. Oof. So, but I made okay. your prototype. I made your fork prototype. How did you affix that tine to the side of the fork? Uh, I, I, by burning my fingers. These were plastic <laughs> forks. Did you like weld it on? Yeah. So I had a barbecue lighter and I burnt the base of it. I, I broke off the ends. Okay. Then I burnt the base and then I would press against the back of the thing. And I, I yeah, I burnt my fingers on every one. Uh, this isn't the only one I made. This was, I made this and I realized, wait, there's room for more innovation here. We, we could expand further. What if, what if you want to give a little thumbs up while you're, you're chowing down? You want a little <laughs> thumbs up fork? Just to show to the people that hey, I'm How's having that a good different day. Different to the other one because he broke the ends. The, 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 the ends. Oh, they were like, it's like a little knuckled fist. Up. Yeah, it's knuckled up. You got a little knuckled, knuckled up. up, thumbs up. I thought maybe, maybe you're having like a chill vibes day. So I have the surfs up model. You want that? Do you give that one a little twist when the spaghetti's on? Uh, yeah, I think you'd have to have a little bit of wrist action in that one for the for the spaghetti to work. Um, maybe you're having a really bad day. This is the F you irk, uh, we have, uh, if you want to insult those around you. So these are all, you know, his forks are all the, the things are broken except the middle, middle finger and the thumb on the side. So you I make just, the I thumb stick out so uh, like 90 degrees. Yeah. Well, here's the problem, Gavin. I'm burning my fingers every time I'm yeah. applying one of those. It's not easy. So I just, you know, we have a full... I think we have a full collection we could possibly sell. Oh, we've got a lot of potential that we could work with. Oh, you so got the what, finger, you get the, somebody made a finger gun? Yeah, a little finger gun one. Just, to, you know, want some action in your life? That's the f face five fork collection? Yes. I love it. Face five fork, yeah. <laughs> the f face five fork collection. Everyone needs five forks. Andrew, that's the greatest thing I've ever seen in my entire life, man. Uh, you, you absolutely took... You took my idea <laughs> and you improved upon it by giving the thumbs personalities and turning it into like gestures. It it adds a whole new level of usability to cutlery. Yeah. Well, you need a range of emotions, I feel. Have you tried eating with any of them? Well, here's the problem. I don't know if uh, melting plastic and reapplying it then releases harmful chemicals that would be <laughs> inedible to eat. So I'm scared to use any of them, but they are visual prototypes. I mean, I'm sure you inhaled way more than you would eat. That's possible. Eric. What? What? Can we get these made? <laughs> no. <laughs> can we check? Can we check? With Why somebody? would we get these made? You don't want the so, face five four collection where only one no. fork is usable for? What do you mean? No. 
No, I don't want any of these forks, and I don't think any of them should exist. Uh, well, they do. Yeah, and they're great. <laughs> they do, and it should just be held to these five, these affronts to God. None of these are good. None of these are forks. Oh, they're all forks. Two of them are spoons. Two of them are closer to spoons than forks. As you're talking, I'm envisioning a certain fork. Can you guess which fork is in my mind right now? <laughs> is it the hang loose fork? <laughs> Close. Close. It's not hang One loose. Of, <laughs> One to the right. <laughs> I will send this to Tony and see if we can. I don't. Again, Andrew has just broken plastic and glued plastic back together. <laughs> Melted. Melted yeah. plastic. Why would you melt plastic and not glue it? Because I don't have glue, but I do have a barbecue lighter. <laughs> <laughs> so what you were doing was you, is you were being creative with the tools at hand, which is. I was. Yeah. I was it making even, it work. Even more impressive to me. And would the goal be you. to make these out of metal? Well, I would say if we do the plastic route, they are not stable. I, I had to reapply <laughs> many of these over time. They are fragile items. I love the idea of these just being sat in the corner of everyone's cutlery drawer, everyone's silverware drawer. And then, you know, there's that day where just nothing's clean and everything's in, like, about to go in the dishwasher. And you, which one do you go for out of those remaining? Say, say the fourth one is gone. Okay. Uh, realistically, I think the thumbs up for me is number one. I think I'm going thumbs up. Yeah, it's the most like level. I would be afraid that the the flipping the bird one, you would spear your the inside of your throat without meaning to. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You like I, I feel like you should be with the finger guns too, but I feel like you would only use the finger gun fork for like to skewer olives or something. Or a oh, corn on the cob. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, a corn on the cob. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I oh, think the, the middle the middle tying one is. Uh, when all your food is halfway down the fork, that's where you're gonna that's where you're gonna be putting into it, then you're gonna get a uvula full of the other one. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe like if you put the 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 F U fork, the the furk, um, in a pie, you could spear some fruit and then just get some <laughs> crust on the other bit. You could Can go we call deep it into fork something. You? Oh. Fork you? I like that. Thank you. That's better. It's a better name. See, that's that why is, you're the head of uniform, and I'm just, I'm in the lab. <laughs> that is good time spent in the lab, I think. I think you've done us that so is, proud there. Andrew, thank you for clocking in uh, to the lab over the last two weeks. <laughs> that I, Your efforts have not gone unappreciated. Honestly, the toughest part was finding plastic cutlery. Mm. It, was, it was difficult. It was surprisingly hard to find plastic forks. Do you have stores in Canada? We do, but like everything is now like paper or like wood. Huh. Tons uh, of stores. We just there's no plastic. I like there's you looked like all the way all over for those plastic ones and didn't just look for glue. <laughs> That's a great. I never even considered because then you could have used wood and it would have been pretty. Well, but I didn't want. I wanted a look. I wanted a certain look. Well, could have right. could have still used glue. <laughs> I could have still used glue, but I was married to the idea of how I was going to do this. I never even considered clearly. Glue. And and what what poetry you've created, Andrew? Really gorgeous stuff. Andrew, let me just say, small men tear down the methods and the ideas of great and creative men. Just remember that. That's true. I, I will agree with that. So anytime you want to show me any of the things Jeff might be talking about, <laughs> go ahead, because I'm looking at five forks that are broken. <laughs> Not broken. Is modified, <laughs> Eric. Modified. modified. Eric Re in the... Recontextualized. In the, in the merch... Slack, Eric wrote, hey, we want to make this. I don't know what that means. Talk to <laughs> Jeff Ramsey, Andrew Pan, and Gavin Free about it. Well, he's, he's certainly passed it on. I, absolutely. Go. it's on, uh, The other ones I'll answer for, this one is like, I don't even know. What <laughs> <laughs> selling. Well, I don't even know what this is. They're it's their forks. forks. No, it's a they're continuation so of our kitchenware range. We've got I, magnets. we got bread clips. They're fork expressions. I don't. Fork expressions uh, is good too. Oh, like Jeff, it. you're coming up with good buzzwords today. Thanks, man. That's great. Fork expressions. Express yourself through food. Think about it. Ooh. <laughs> I'm yeah. Let's and let's focus in on forks because, like, I don't know. I don't know what the version of this would be in knives or spoons. Well, that's the thing. It's like <clears throat> it, it all boils down to the idea that you that we essentially 
made a fork 300 years ago and then said st- and stopped all R&D that day. They're like, good enough, move it on. And it's yeah. time. And we need to we need to go back and take a look at these things and say, like, no, maybe one pass wasn't enough. Maybe there should have been a second and a third and a fourth pass on the fork. Yeah, no one ever patched the fork. <laughs> I don't know if this will make sense to anyone else, but I don't want to be a knife guy. Like, in my head, when I think of, like, knife guy, that's not, I don't like that. I don't like that feel, but I like being a fork guy. There's something good about a fork guy. It's better than a knife guy or a spoon guy. I'd say it's infinitely more useless than a knife. Yeah, I don't know. It's just the knife guy to me is overly aggressive. The spoon guy to me is weird. There's something normal about the fork guy. The I fork agree. Guy feels like a good middle. For, fork guy is kind of like uh, fork guy is kind of like the best of all worlds. He, he kind of like straddles in between. Yeah, he's a, the, it's an everyman piece of color. Fork <laughs> fork guy is an everyman. Yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. Fork is an everyman uh, tool for sure. How is the the museum? Sweet. Uh, oh, that's uh, right. I didn't, you, didn't know. Wait, you okay. <laughs> wait, did you blank on museum? I didn't know you're what he the, was talking about for a second. You're uh, the leader of the museum. We've been talking about the goddamn f- face museum for six months. Well, not today. We haven't. That was <laughs> two, two weeks ago. We haven't spoken in two weeks. Uh, it was great. <laughs> I, I, I enjoyed it. How did you like it, Eric? It was great. It was really cool to see all of the stuff that you never thought would be collected in one place in one place. Uh, seeing the porta potty as a main feature, like everything, it was it was really really cool. RTX altogether was a lot of fun, and awesome. we got to do the break show, which was probably the biggest f- face representation there. Um, and we got to announce that come the beginning of August, I think, uh, which will be what two weeks from when this comes out. Uh, the break show will be a live weekly show, a one hour show with myself, Jeff and Emily. So Very exciting. Um, yeah, and, really excited to get going on that. The other three of you, if and when you ever want to come. Yeah, yeah. Whenever you I mean, truly, this isn't us go like this isn't to box you out. It's to keep your schedules loose. And then if you have a Monday where you have an availability, I would love for you guys to be on while we open cards that look like stepdads or uh, guys who look like they are. <laughs> oh, I love red dudes. Pooping. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> that kind of stuff so that are you uh, saying after 11 years of me doing a live weekly show on a monday i finally <laughs> finally yes. stopped doing it and you're like hey well, check out this monday live stream well there's definitely a reason why there was an opening live on monday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> why it was the easiest day to go oh, look at that big old gap <laughs> uh one thing we did though that was cool was we uh eric passed around a sack pack ahead of time to the line and people just threw in packs of stuff and then so we only opened cards that the audience brought and we oh, didn't even get through yeah we didn't get through half of them probably we have a ton oh of wow there was also a fan meetup and i have something that i can present to you guys which is uh the summer of 98 yearbook that has been put together by the community that I have here in my office that I can bring in and and all that stuff. It is really cool. It is a full-on yearbook. You can get looks at, uh, we'll post pictures later, but if you guys want to look at it there, you can. That's awesome. Pictures of community members what they look like in the summer <laughs> of 98, what they were doing, a little, oh. you know, like oh my God, a quote or a song lyric that they really liked. So I have this. <laughs> you um, have a book of kids on your desk? I have. I, it is it's in my office. Uh, oh, this is great. It's summer of 98 stuff. And then if you keep going, it's signed by uh, a bunch of our community members who brought stuff, got pictures. And everything oh, like that. Cool. It was such a cool turnout. It was such a cool thing. It'll definitely be something that we cherish and hang on to. <laughs> I am um, really impressed. In addition to that, a lot of people gave us a lot of really cool stuff over the weekend. Not the least of which were the uh, non-regulation Gerplers uh, mm. that that those uh, a, a couple of people gave us, and they gave they gave me one for you for each of you. So there's mm-hmm. a Gavin oh. one and an, and an Andrew one as well. So cool. And they're they're adorable. They're Gorplers. Or grumplers, 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 grunchlers, go go nowlers. Yeah, they're yeah. they're all it, very it's funny. So it's great, and instead of some of them, instead of <laughs> face, it says face face or. <laughs> face, <laughs> I like they, in the in the yearbook. Someone is just non-existent. 
Like, oh, yeah. Well, they, they weren't born, born. yet. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I was bummed I had to miss that meetup. It was, uh, unfortunately, it was the exact same time I had to do uh, a bit in the Shady Rays uh, booth because they were mm. the Sh- Shady Rays. They were like the sponsor of the f- Face Museum, and which oh, wow. was very, very kind of them. So I had to mm-hmm. go over and, and thank them for, you know, spending money on a on a podcast called f- Face. It's rare. Which, uh, it's and rare. It's appreciate. And so what, so what, did, what did people say about the museum? Was it like a, a nice attraction or was it just oh, a yeah. bunch of shit yeah, that yeah, no yeah, one pe- cared about? No, no, no. Pe- people were into it. Uh, they got shirts. Me and Jeff were there. We were signing stuff. We actually, me and Jeff, after one of our live things, we went over and recorded two episodes of Anma, supplemental Anma content. One will be oh. out by now and one won't be out for another eight weeks. <laughs> so, oh, because it's got to, you got to wait for Gus to take another yep. two uh-huh. weeks off. Yeah, yep. we we wanted to record eight weeks in advance just for the yeah. fun of it. So uh, I, I, I sent you guys a link of all the fake Gerplers. There are there oh, they're so good. There there's one that just says the Grink, and I'm really a big fan of <laughs> the Gobbler, the, the Gobbler, the Glumper. <laughs> yeah, go we, uh, go now, Fluke Face. Great. We met a, a, a oh, million zimmer. awesome people. I actually signed a couple of uh, pre-hit balls, mm-hmm. uh, like solidly hit balls, too. Um, you don't see those often anymore. Uh, signed a couple of vinyls. Yeah, signed a bunch of vinyl. Yep. But the balls, the ones that we sent out, and they've yes. come back to you? Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. so cool. Yep. That's wicked. It's Dude, we- really crazy having stuff that... Uh, I was beaten down for for so long come back to us and people were like I love that I got this and I went yeah. that's the other side that I don't get to see I will say <laughs> well, dude, who are stoked about it. <laughs> it that vinyl when people would pull the vinyl out for signatures mm-hmm. it, people would get tense around and they'd be like is that the fucking vinyl did you have yeah. the vinyl did you travel <laughs> people would be like did you travel you traveled on a plane with the vinyl are you crazy mm-hmm. <laughs> it is weird like when that pulls out it's like a whole uh, different level of reverence for some reason yeah oh, that's it, awesome it was a lot of RTX was a blast. As annoying it, it always is and as stressful as it is to do all these limited runs, it's so cool when you see them in people's hands, oh, especially awesome. when they come back to you like that. And now the, oh. we have the we have the bloody golden gurps out there. We've we had our leak. Oh we did. yeah. Yeah, we, we had did. our leak. Golden Gurp winner number leak. five. Golden <laughs> Gurpler number five leaked it to the world. No hesitation. Yeah. I will hope, yeah, I hope you're happy with yourself, number five. Hope you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny that it's there's just a YouTube video that we didn't put out, but it's the only place to see that piece I of love face it. content. Like I think it's great. I love it. It's like we don't own it. It's not our video. We gave yeah. it to, we gave it to number five. Number five posted it. Send all the views to number five. Um, yeah, you can <laughs> upload stuff that you know, you can upload stuff to claim it when other people upload it, and we didn't even do that. No, <laughs> fuck no. We can't. That was the whole point of this stupid yeah. thing was that it's yep. your video. Do whatever you want to with it. As, I also as, am happy people liked it. Like, it, people yeah. seem to enjoy the video. That's great. 27,000 views on that video. As of right now. <laughs> That's more than our episodes get on yeah. our so it, did, so it did really well. Um, we get nothing for it. Yeah. Uh, I will say that uh, something that we thought about later, we kept going, yeah, when you get it, we're going to know you leaked it because it's Gerpler number five. And then I went. Who do, how do we know who Gerpler number five yeah, is? Yeah, we, we, we don't. We have no. We that's well, the watermark. I, was, I told you I wanted to put their names on, but I'm looking uh, at the order, and you said no because that'll take forever. Wait, it you would. wanted to put their names on what? On the, think, on the watermark. On the, yeah, wanted, on the watermark. I, I think so he you wanted, wanted to choose yeah. who it goes to. No. No. He wanted. I wanted the. the f- the, the warehouse the to, warehouse like to send them all out and record uh-huh. the names uh-huh. of everyone who got a gold one. Uh huh. Send and them that, back to us, and, and then I put and, them on. I understand now. I understand what you're saying. There. No, it's crazy I, though. Um, yeah, I 100 percent agree. Do you trust? Do you trust them? Do you trust them to do that? God no. <laughs> I wouldn't trust them with anything. They... <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Why? That's not on our merch team. That's not our team. That's a warehouse. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Yeah, I can't imagine trying to explain to a warehouse. Okay, so we want you to to pick where these like fulfill these orders, but then don't send them to the people. Send them somewhere else completely. Then we'll send them back to you. Don't worry about it. We promise it'll happen. And then you (laughs) send send it then. Yeah, or unless you like RNG all the orders before we send it all to the warehouse. 
As someone who worked in a warehouse, I would hate you if I got that oh, request. 100%. That is an insane request. On it, at any time we have to interact with what we're selling, which is a lot on this show, it's an absolute nightmare. It's a pain for everyone involved. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like, well, uh, yeah, that is funny, though, the idea that the warehouse now suffers as well. <laughs> in a completely unique way. <laughs> just people it who just don't even know what this is. Yeah. <laughs> can can are, I walk us back just a hair? We were talking about the, the summer of 98 yearbook. Yeah. Um, Andrew, before we were starting, was telling me that you, Andrew, you're deep in the summer of I'm 98 I'm deep right in now. the summer of 98. Yeah, I had a content idea for what that supplemental could be uh, that I want to run by you guys. When I think about... Like what the summer means to me is like there's the song of the summer and there's like the movie of the summer are like two of the mm -hmm. staples of yeah. the summer. So I've been exclusively watching movies from the summer of 98 for like the past two weeks. And my idea is I will publish a list of like all of the films that release widely in the summer of 98. And then we'll all pick three of them and then we'll have a discussion amongst all of us. We'll eliminate five of those films. So then we end up with a top 10. And then we will rank as a collective what the top 10 films of the summer of 98 are. And I also did that for music. I looked at the top 100 and uh, wrote down a list of all the songs that charted and released during the summer of 98. And what are the boundaries? The same... What's the border of the summer, technically? It's June. It's the 1st of June till the end of August. So like September 1st. I've been okay. going hard on songs. Just been putting on summer of 98 playlists. And uh, it's mm -hmm. a real throwback. I haven't really thought about movies. What came out? Was it, was it like... Did Godzilla come out? Uh, no, that didn't. But the song for Godzilla did release within the window. The six minute Puff Daddy um, track. I don't remember what it's called. Oh. There's some great licensed music or, or not even licensed music, but like song music or movie music. So I, I thought, I thought Jamiroquai had Godzilla. Uh, no, I know. I think it's a, it's a no, Puff it was, Daddy it, song. It was Puff Daddy, and it was cut. What was it? Come with me, and it's just the riff from Cashmere, the Led Zeppelin <laughs> yes. song. Do you remember that? Yes, it is. And it's like six minutes long it's for some so reason. It's so long. It's Jimmy Page so also is credited on it. Yep. You're right. You're you're reminding me of that now. Yeah, because it's just the riff. It's great. My favorite of the movie songs is uh, "Woof Woof" by the Sixty Nine Boys for the <laughs> Doctor Doolittle movie. That's a, a great discovery I made. It's a long list. It's probably like 70 songs and like 40 or 50 movies. Hey, Gav, um, do you know, a mo you know what movie came out in summer 98? What's that? Oh, a Dirty Work. <laughs> I'm going to go lift weights. <laughs> I'm going to go lift weights. What? <laughs> I was uh, texting with Gavin before. The Avengers, the 98 Avengers came out in the summer of 98. I think it's the worst movie of the summer of 98. The Avengers, like the uh, TV show remake? The TV show remake, yes, with Sean Connery and uh, Ray Fiennes and Uma Thurman. I never saw it. John Steed and Emma Peel. Yeah, I remember watching that when it came out, uh, having not never seen the original TV show, but I remember that film being just dog shit. Awful. It's just, it's like, it's the worst British charm I've ever seen. <laughs> like, they're trying to be charming constantly, but none of it is charming. It's just annoying. None of it makes sense. It's a movie about the weather, ultimately. It sucks. <laughs> it really sucks. There's a scene, you know how like in in like spy movies, there's sometimes the the board of villains and like they're wearing a disguise or whatever. So like nobody knows the identities of the people. They do that in this movie, but they put everybody in a giant fucking bear mascot outfit for no reason. <laughs> There's no explanation for why that's the choice. They just all look like fucking beanie babies sitting at this table. And it makes no sense. It's ridiculous. Sean Connery's wearing one. It's so dumb. It's a terrible movie. For a split second there, I thought you, <laughs> you were saying they were all in the same mascot outfit. And then I started imagining, like, what if two bad guys met up in, like, one of those horse costumes? <laughs> <laughs> like one at the front and one at the back. <laughs> I like the idea of them like breaking off. You know, like how sometimes they'll yeah. separate and the, the characters have to choose who to follow. But they still don't know who each other are because yeah. <laughs> we're in the horse. That's sort of the idea of like he says, like, I know who you all are and you know who you are, but you can't know who each other are. Yeah. It's a dumb system thing. <laughs> so are are we into this summer of ninety eight draft? I mean, draft is maybe a loose term because ranking, I, yeah, I yeah, ranking, ranking, I guess. Ranking definitive okay. list. So do we, have to, list. do we have to watch everything and listen to everything? No, in? you can you can do whatever you want to do. I've just yeah. decided that I would like to to watch all these movies, so okay. I've been doing that. 
But it's there's a lot of mainstream movies that you've probably seen. Like I probably had watched like ten or fifteen of these before I even started. So can you send okay. us the list? Sure, I'll have to compile it in like okay. a, a better way than I currently have. But yeah, I'll do that in the Slack as soon as we're done. The no worries. Spotify. That way we can we can just all be operating off the same. Yeah, absolutely. Data. Yeah, I'll do that for the songs as well as the uh, the movies. So I, I figured, like as I said, we'd all pick like three, so we'd end up with fifteen, mm. and then we will remove from there and like have take it very seriously. Like this is our list. Okay. Find out what the definitive song and movie of the summer '98 is. I some great it. movies in the summer of 98. There's some real shit, too. There's some, <laughs> some fascinating, just like even culturally, I've seen it, Eric, like how Stella got her groove back is not a movie that would come out now. That is a terrible, weird film. <laughs> Why is it a terrible film? Uh, it's, it's like the whole premise of it is this 40-year-old dating a 20-year-old and that the 40-year-old is oh, in the right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And no, the movie see, yeah. ends with them getting married and like, a, it's just, it's not good. She did it's, get her groove back, though. I, I don't know if she did. And if she, she did, did she maybe did. she shouldn't have. Everybody deserves a groove, Andrew. I don't know. The way that, if that is how she got her groove back, there's maybe a discussion that could be had. I mean, have you ever lost your groove? Uh, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. I'd say any time my ankles are below 40, <laughs> I'd say I'm grooveless. Are, are you grooving right now? <laughs> I'm grooving right now. Yeah, okay, we, got, we got a pretty good groove going. Wow, that's the most confident I've heard you about your ankles in about a year. No, oh, yeah, my ankles have been fine. My lungs are terrible. That's since <laughs> this COVID thing. Yeah, that's, that's my new... Ankles were last year, okay? Summer 98 <laughs> is all about bad lungs. <laughs> Cold turkey may be great on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your bad habits. And we're not talking about some weird stock tips from the internet type thing. We're talking about our sponsor, Fume, and they look at the problem in a different way. Not everything in a bad habit is wrong, so instead of a drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Fume is an innovative, award-nominated device that does just that. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor... Fume uses flavored air, and instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses all natural delicious flavors. You get it. Instead of bad, Fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. Your Fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while breaking your habit. Another thing you'll immediately notice about the Fume is how beautiful it is. I mean, it looks incredible. The real wood and the shape are just awesome. It's something that you can feel really cool using. Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to Fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 100,000 customers and has thousands of success stories, and there's no reason that can't be you. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the Journey Pack today. Head to tryfume.com and use code FACE to save 10% off when you get the Journey Pack today. That's tryfum.com and use code FACE to save an additional 10% off your order today. Today's episode is sponsored by PayPal Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. But did you know it only takes a few seconds to get it? That means if you go to add it to your laptop or iPhone right now, you can be done before this ad read is even over. And there's nothing more satisfying than immediately knocking something off of your to-do list. Like, there's always so many things. When you're able to do something quickly, it's always fantastic. And you know what else works fast? Honey's deal-finding abilities. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Now, how it works is imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button appears, and all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons that can find for that site. If Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. I've used Honey. It has saved me money on all sorts of things from food, clothing, tech. It's so easy. It's so convenient. And it's great to know that if there is a coupon or deal available, I will find it through Honey. And Honey doesn't just work on desktop. It works on your iPhone, too. Just activate on Safari on your phone and save on the go. Getting Honey seriously only takes a few seconds, and by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting the show. Get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash face. That's joinhoney.com slash face. I know that none of you watch porn, but just in case you have any friends that do, you'll want to pay attention to this. 
With everything going on in the world, governments have increased their surveillance. They're using your devices to track your locations, movements, and in many countries, your internet activity. You don't want to be literally caught with your pants down. And one of the best ways to keep your online browsing activity private is by using ExpressVPN. When you use ExpressVPN, your internet connection is rerouted through a secure encrypted server so you can surf the web anonymously without looking over your shoulder. Look, I know you probably think all you have to do is use incognito mode and no one can see that you've watched every last hentai video on Pornhub, but you're wrong. Even when you use incognito mode, your internet provider like Verizon or AT&T can see every single website you visit, and you live on campus or use a shared Wi-Fi, your network admin can too. To be honest, that's kind of scary. That's why I use ExpressVPN whenever I go online, and I recommend all of you do the same. Without ExpressVPN, you're giving people a free license to peek over your shoulder and see all the freaky shit you're looking at. So protect your privacy today and get three months of ExpressVPN for free. Visit expressvpn.com slash face. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash face for three free months with a year. Can I share uh, one other thing that I realized that uh, I'm really stupid? I yeah. realized I made a, a really dumb mistake, and it's nice that I caught it, so... Little Caesars has uh, they introduced these like pizza pizza pop things like they were circular and I ordered them like a month ago. They were a new item. What? Wait, well, like a, like a little pizza sphere. Yeah, like a little sphere, like a little circular, like almost um, pizza bite, I'd say. Huh. Uh, I'll post a photo of what they look like in a minute and you can see um, what I realized. So I ordered it funny enough, literally a month ago was when I ordered this. And uh, at the time, they didn't have photos of the product. It yeah. was just these were their, their puffs, they're called. I was feeling more the cheese and herb one, but I ordered the pepperoni crazy puffs because it comes with four as opposed to three, which I thought was weird at the time. Oh, but it's three cheese. It's three cheese. <laughs> it took me... I went to reorder them last week, and I realized my mistake. I thought that <laughs> pepperoni crazy puffs, I, I went, oh, there's four of those and they're five ninety nine, <laughs> or I could get three cheese ones, but they're, it's the same price and it doesn't. So I ordered the pepperoni <laughs> at the time when I wanted the cheese more. And then when I opened the app to reorder them last week, I realized I'm a fucking idiot. That's th it's three cheese. But there's yeah. still four. Because it even says four it's, handheld pieces below does. three cheese. I was just so drawn into the three. I don't think that's so, so dumb, though, because I feel like three cheese isn't as popular as four cheese when it comes to pizza. Really? I've never heard four cheese. You never heard four cheese? No. It's always three cheese. Here. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, maybe I don't know what I'm on about. Uh, no, I, no, it's uh, four, four, che four cheese. Is a yeah, it's kind of thing. thing. I. Really? I, I I will say I can't see the number three without also seeing the number four right below it. Like they're next to each other. But I, I will. I want to give Andrew credit because it does say the number three when it should be spelled out. True. 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 Why should it be spelled out? T H R. -E -E. Like it should be spelled out. It shouldn't oh, wow. say that. But it shouldn't say three cheese. It and then with the number four right below it, it should it should be spelled out three cheese. The red baron I doesn't think. spell they it out. Do it they agree. do it incorrectly. It According out. to AP Style Guide, any number uh, under ten needs to be written out. Thank you. <laughs> so wait, you that was just never see numbers below ten. You not 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 in journalism or in red baron pizzas, <laughs> <laughs> which I qualify as journalism. Yeah, same thing. <laughs> Oh, Gavin just wrote 24-7. Well, I mean, the seven's got to be read out. You think 24-7 is, it, it's, it's written a lot in, in like, new, the newspaper? In the newspaper? What? Which would be journalism, which is what we're talking about. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, it, that made me, it, yeah. what you just did to me made me dizzy. But what's journalism about a door dash order? <laughs> I'm just saying, I just think it should be, like, look, it should be... He's saying there's at, a look standard. Look at how much simpler. Oh, yeah. Four yeah, cheese. that's nice. That does that's look a That's a good look at pizza right there. I'm just the number four. Hey, I had... That does oh, look like... If pizza. you guys don't mind indulging for a second, I had another idea for another business or product line that I was going to run by you guys. See okay. What you think. Um, 
the other day I was, uh, well, a couple weeks ago I went on a vacation and I was, so I was out of town and I was, I was at like one of those, one of those destinations where everybody buys a shirt that says where it is on it, you know? And as I was, I was just seeing all the people buying all the shirts for the place we were at. And then I saw, um, I saw, I noticed, I started paying attention to what shirts other people were, were also wearing. And they'd be like, oh, I, uh, I, I summited uh, Mount Kilimanjaro. And then there was a shirt that was like, I saw the Great Wall of China. And then I, uh, I don't know, I saw a shirt for like someplace in Italy. And I got to thinking, it's way easier to just buy a shirt from a place than to actually go to the place. So what if we just started a business where we sold like souvenir shirts so that you don't have to go to the place? <laughs> like what if I just sold a I saw the Great Wall of I personally went to the Great Wall of China and touched it t-shirt. How's anybody gonna know? So we, would we be importing from the actual gift shops in No, all these we places? would make our own. No. From scratch. Oh, make, what are you gonna trademark a location? Like is somebody going to tell me I, I can't make a shirt for Butte, Montana? No. Of course I can't. <laughs> yeah. This sounds like something Spencer's gifts would do. <laughs> I guess. We could do that. What if we also had a green screen and we could put you where the yeah. shirt is? Now we're talking. Okay, time. now we're go. talking. This is good. Now I'm in. Like you're gonna multiple. Oh, places. it'd be great for people lying about yeah. going somewhere. Yeah, exactly. I don't ever honestly want to go all the way to the Great Wall of China. It seems like a lot of effort. But if I had a oh, shirt yeah. that said I went on it, <laughs> I would look pretty fucking cool, and I would totally pretend like I was there. I'd be like, shirt. Somebody'd be like, oh my god, you went to the Great Wall of China. I'd be like, that's what the shirt says. Dude, between this and fucking and the hiding spot, we can help people lie so much. Yeah. <laughs> How close would the Great Wall of China have to be before you went to see it, Jeff? Uh, I'd have to already be in China for something else. No, but like if you could, let's say it wasn't in China. Let's say it could be anywhere. Like I would. All right, let's let's uh, have an this. hour like by if car. It was the Great Wall of like Third Street. An hour by car is the furthest I would go to see the Great Wall. All right, let's uh, maybe the Great Wall of China is a bad example because I probably would put a little bit of effort into going. Uh, really? I think so. I mean, it's a fuck. It's visible from space. That's pretty cool. How about this? Here's a place that I have no interest in ever going. Mount Everest. I don't ever want to go to base camp. I certainly don't want to climb it. I don't want to look at all the dead dudes. I don't want to. I don't <laughs> want to wear a winter coat that long. Like, <laughs> I don't want to have oxygen strapped to me. I got no desire to do that. But if I had a shirt that said I climbed Mount Everest, I'd wear it all fucking day long, and nobody would ever know the difference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I wouldn't even have to go there to get the shirt. I could just go to you, uh, 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 the store for places that you want people to think you went to, but you didn't really go to dot com. You know, there's going to be like a stolen valor level of outrage for people who have <laughs> summited Everest. It's like, hey, but I know people who have died up there. People will be livid. They'd hate you. I guess. I could see Jeff climbing Everest, though. Like, that's what I was trying to think in my head. If I saw Jeff in that shirt and I didn't know who Jeff was. Right. I, I don't think I would question that. I think I just assume. How often, and, he, and that's the real kicker right there, Andrew, and I'm, thank you for pointing that out, because this is what it really boils down to. How often do you see a person, see a dude, let's say me, wearing a shirt, <laughs> and you read the shirt and it says a little bit of information, like a band that he likes, or a, a, a tour that he went to, or a summit that he climbed? How often do you go and talk to that person and go oh uh did you you went to mount uh rushmore or you went to wherever the fuck it was everest and you're not gonna do that you're just gonna no, go oh that dude that, dude that dude went to everest that's cool yeah it would have to something would have to happen that it would force a conversation to occur right like maybe we're in like an elevator and it broke or something or just like some there'd have to be some scenario then you can go oh yeah i guess i did or you can go uh no i got it at uh, the goodwill or whatever if you want to if you want to if you're embarrassed but yeah, nine times oh, out of great. ten most people are just going to see it and assume you climbed Mount everest and they're going to be like wow that dude's awesome yeah it's an impressive feat is what i would think yeah i wonder how often you did it honestly you, you could have done it multiple times you're not going to buy a shirt every time you climb you, it. you could even get fantastical about it too right you could get like a shirt that says like i i discovered and went to and saw el dorado <laughs> nobody's gonna know <laughs> Yeah, I wonder how what the Atlantis shirts would do. There is something <laughs> hilarious to me about what if this is your whole wardrobe? Could you imagine somebody going into your wardrobe for the first time and it's, <laughs> I was at Everest, I went to the Titanic, I went to El Dorado. Like, just every shirt is a, 
accomplishment and achievement. It's a, I'll tell you what, it's an even cooler wardrobe than a bunch of logos that look like ACDC but aren't actually ACDC. <laughs> that's, that's a great point. I'd much rather have a I went to Everest shirt. Like, th- think of all the, I've never been to Mount Fuji, but nobody has to know that. Honestly, I don't, we could even combine the two. You could use the ACDC font for I went to Everest. <laughs> Why stop? Why why restrict the two things? Let's blend them. Where is People a place? Where is a place that we all want to pretend we've been to that we haven't been to? Like, can we decide on one location? Huh? Like collect? Like we all agree that this would be a good place? Like we would all wear this shirt that says that we went there and we don't actually want to go there? Oh. Uh, huh. Is there any place hmm. that I actually want to go? <laughs> Well, you once you once said, Andrew, you wouldn't travel more than ten blocks, even if those blue roofs from Greece were ten blocks away. That's true. Yeah, well, no, that's that needs to be my neighbor's house for me to yeah. actually pursue that. I've seen roofs. <laughs> I can paint my roof blue. Well, you can't see I'm your not own roof by that. Uh, well, I mean, when I step outside, I can. I can look up. I can go up the street and go. Oh, it's a blue roof. Look All right. That. How about this? What? <laughs> Have you guys ever been to the Badlands? Uh, is that Borderlands DLC? No, the, the, the Badlands. I've never been there. Where's the no. Badlands? It's uh, it's in South Dakota. Is that a Jim Carrey movie? The Badlands? Badlands? Or South Dakota. Yeah, with Jason Momoa. What was that movie? I don't Badland? Know. Jim Carrey and Jason Momoa. They're in a desert? Well, this I'm is... probably way off. The Badlands is pretty, no. pretty deserty. Oh, so it's just a bunch of mountains? Yeah, it's just Badlands. Like, you can't live out there. There's nothing there. Andrew, you're thinking of Bad Batch. Thank you. Okay. Like, well, was Bad was in there. Like, I'm never going to go to the Badlands, but what if we made a shirt that says I visited the Badlands and all I got was this awesome fucking shirt? <laughs> See, I, I, don't th- I think it has to be serious, the tone of the shirt, for it to work. Well, if it comes across as a joke, then it kind of falls apart. Well, that's why I didn't say lousy shirt. That's why I said awesome fucking shirt, because I was taking it seriously. That's a good point. Yeah. That's on me. I was trying to be. I was trying to be serious about it, so, specifically for that reason, Andrew. Anyway, just something to think about. Think about places around the world. I'm probably never going to go to Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan, I, and that is the one country. No matter how much I study the name of it, I can never freaking spell Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan. So, what is like the best place to visit in Kyrgyzstan? Yeah, why? What even made you choose that? Why are you studying Kyrgyzstan? I just, I just wanted to be able to name all the countries, and uh, okay. I can't because I'm rubbish, and I can't even spell that one. <laughs> so, it's there's like some Y's and G's, and there's a Z, I think. Here we go. One of the most popular tourist destination points in Kyrgyzstan is the Lake Isik Kul. Numerous hotels, resorts, and boarding houses are located along its northern shore. The most popular beach zones are in the city of Cholpanada. And settlements nearby. So we just need to make beachwear for Isik Cool and Cholpan Ada, and then we just then we're set. There you go. More than a million people a year visit there. <laughs> uh, ooh, except well, they used to, used to at ah. a different time. Things were doesn't exist different. anymore. My number one where I want to go is Cyber City. There's an arcade that was where I lived, and they shut it. We don't have any arcades anymore. Cyber City, and my number one. I'd love a I've been to Cyber City shirt. Well, now mini golf. Why? Decades. Why does it have to be? Uh, why does it have to be in the here and now? Why can't? Why can't we expand this to back in time? That's true. Like <laughs> I, I saw, see? I saw the fall oh, of Rome. I back there. Uh, oh, Cyber City. That looks pretty cool. It was great. It looks like it's you fantastic. could ride your bike up that side. We could even do this in the face universe. We could set up a little shack at the puddle of piss that Andrew watched, and sell <laughs> shirts for that. Nobody needs that. Nobody wants. I didn't even want to be there for that. I don't know why like, I'd have a shirt that said I, I was. witnessed the Vancouver Island McDonald's piss lady. Yeah, I feel like I'd love to go to that spot. I wouldn't want to stand exactly <laughs> on it. I would just want to be, you know, in that moment of historical value amongst. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! If we ever go there, Andrew, can you show me where it was? Yeah, absolutely. You yeah, can please. call me, and I'll tell you to like step back like four feet. Why do I have to call you? Why would Why would you come and just show me? Because I, I, we're trying to, I don't know, it would be easier for me to look out my window <laughs> and be able to tell oh, like where to navigate it was you. as opposed what? to being. What? <laughs> it would be easier for you 
to look out your window? Well, just because, like, I don't know necessarily if I was on the ground, I don't know if I could accurately no, I guess where it was. Why don't you film through a telescope? I need the same perspective. <laughs> and you'll just hear me down the phone and you can be like, left a bit, back a bit. <laughs> I could just yell. It's it's close enough. I could yell. Oh, okay. I'll just open the door and I'll just yell at you. I, I guess we don't even really need phones, but yeah. Oh, so you were that close enough where she could have seen you watching? Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I thought they were I making so. eye contact when it happened. Uh, okay, I thought they were a little no. bit further out. No, they were. They're a little. It's like a parking lot type thing <laughs> away. <laughs> There's a distance. There is a distance, but yeah, you could. I'd assume you could see. I, I've never been to that location <laughs> and look back, but yeah, I'd love to, I'd love to go. There. I'd love to check that off my list of places. Are you gonna I have go. uh, you, my doorbell in your hand when you do it? <laughs> Taunt me from a distance. What's it? What's the uh, thumbstick update? I've been trying to look into the fucking the camera thing. I'm just nice. gonna start. I'm just gonna okay. start without gonna without the it. camera. Without the camera, yeah. What what's that to if look you into? Want proof? That's too bad. Uh, I was looking into if I could use my Kinect. The Kinect doesn't work at all uh, for the, the console. And I was looking into camera options. But yeah, you can use a like a Logitech. I could, yeah. But well, I'm just going to start up as intended. What I don't like you moving the goalposts. Well, not really a moving <laughs> goalpost. Well, it was never discussed, and then it arrived, and it all of a sudden became a thing, even though we talked about it a lot. And if we want to talk about lack of proof, when you and I did the Halo 2 time challenge, I was the only one streaming that. I didn't see you play at all. Mm. You just went off. You just mm. did it and then claimed you at a time. That's, yeah, that's true. Pretty, I mean, it's just a pretty good point it's, there. Uh, it's quite a, yeah. you know, quite a visual challenge. Sort of. It's kind of, yeah. Kind of comically large controller. Yeah, like, you watch yeah. somebody try to use it successfully. Yeah, it's like, like a, printed them and mailed them across the country and all that. <laughs> I mean, internationally, just so we're clear. Oh, it's yeah. true. It did leave America. Uh, yeah. Yeah. How's everybody, yeah. what's everybody else going on? <laughs> you went to Sloppy Joe's and it's crazy you haven't <laughs> talked about it yet. Yeah, what are what? you doing? Uh, you didn't even. I, I mean, we're, we're 45 <laughs> minutes in and we just got to it. Jeff went, oh, I don't have anything. Yeah. We didn't lead. We didn't lead with you this. You were at Killing Sloppy me. Joe's. I had Jack come up to me and be like, hey, you know about this? And Eric was like, hey, do you see this? I was like, what? Okay, well, two, two things. <laughs> I had it tweeted to me. Two, two things. First off, one, uh, he, I don't know how he's made it into his fucking 40s and still hasn't learned to keep his fucking mouth shut, but Jack needs to stop <laughs> fucking sharing information that's not his to share around. <laughs> if I'd wanted you guys to know I was a Sloppy Joe's, I would have told you I was a Sloppy Joe's ahead of time. And second, uh, just because it's some you people told you I was a Sloppy Joe's doesn't mean I was definitely actually there. Oh, so you're saying you may not have been at Sloppy Joe's. <laughs> I mean, it's possible that I wasn't there. I mean that Eric just posted a screenshot of, of what appears to be you and Emily. That appears to this, be two the... blonde ladies looking down. I can't believe. Uh, <laughs> 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 right, the two people were not looking. Yeah, I can't They're believe you them, didn't Jeff. do that while we were playing bingo. What do you mean? What? You How can't you have... believe I didn't go all the way to Sloppy <laughs> Joe's <laughs> while I was playing about? bingo with you at the time. As in, like you could have just been like around the corner playing bingo. What are you? What are you talking? What world are you living in? Because we the always talked about how. What we always talked about how it'd be funny if we were all playing bingo and then suddenly one of us was like, "Okay, one sec," and then we're just on the stream like we we're playing that from would, a Airbnb. That, around it, the corner that would be really funny, but the logistics of how you do that become what very the, you complicated. Mean the hard part is getting all the way there. He was already there. He I been would like, argue that being there is the easiest part of that whole bit. He could have just been like, "All right, we're playing bingo at this time." Bam! We would never have known. I think we would. He'd sound like shit. He wouldn't sound like himself. There'd be noises in the background. Be a fucking parade happening. It'd be unexplained. What are you saying? You would. Where is he staying? Is there a hotel near Sloppy Joe's, Jeff? That you could do this realistically? You could do a podcast uh, from that street. Yeah. Yeah. No, not from the street. Uh, Sloppy. No. Th absolutely. Duval not in street? the street. The street. Uh, the street that Sloppy Joe's is on is a street called Duval Street. It is fifteen blocks long. It runs from the uh, Atlantic Ocean to the Gulf of Mexico. So it goes from ocean to ocean. It's it's the width of Key West. Uh, so you can literally walk from one end of the ocean to the other, which is kind of cool. Uh, but it's all bars and restaurants. I don't know that there's any hotels on that street. But mm. my hotel was three blocks from. Sloppy Joe's. I was right there. So I easily could have done what you're describing. Yeah. 
That's what I was saying. I didn't do that, though. What I did do was go on vacation. No, but the timing, the seamlessness of it, I, you can't, you couldn't pull that off. If it helps you, Jeff going and doing this helped everyone else with bingo as he was, I think, a crosswalk coward. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're sucking on chili dogs. <laughs> Uh, acknowledge the camera. What other, are there oh, any other I, things off selfie? the top of your head? That I you took did? I did a selfie. selfie. I dropped something. <laughs> um, I shook Emily's hand. I did you throw her. Up? Uh, I didn't throw up. Uh, I couldn't throw up. I did. A, I did a bunch of stuff. Uh, actually, so the goal was <clears throat> first off, I went to Key West uh, for for Fourth of July weekend just to get away. We wanted to go uh. somewhere. It wasn't specifically. It wasn't even really going to be Key West necessarily. It, it could have been. We threw places in a hat, and we just ended up pulling out Key West, and we were like, oh, wow. oh it seems appropriate. Fuck it. Let's go. Um, I hadn't been in like 17 years or something, and so, and Emily had never been. First off, I got to say, Key West is uh, awesome in every way. It is so worth going to. We, drove, we flew to Miami and rented a car and drove down to Key West because I wanted to do that drive again. How far the is drive that? drive is amazing. Uh, it's like three hours, maybe four hours. Somewhere around there. But it's like, you're just driving down. You're just driving from island to island to island. You know, it's just hopping islands. It's fucking cool. Uh, and so we got there. I didn't really have any agenda in terms of like what to do with Sloppy Joes or anything. But we, I, so what we came up with was I wanted to try to sneak on camera as many times as possible <laughs> and see. And the goal <laughs> Emily and I had for ourselves, because we were there for four days, was to try to get on camera 30 times without anybody noticing. <laughs> oh, my God. We got caught instantly. <laughs> so there are people just bingoing away or watching the stream yeah. all the time. I think within like five minutes of us appearing on camera, That's it was on Reddit. Insane. Yeah, it was pretty crazy because I thought we were going to get a lot further along. Uh, people haven't seen all of us, obviously, because we were doing like we <laughs> we would go by. We took the ghost, uh, the Ghost yards and graveyards <laughs> thing. Uh, we took that, so we were going up and down the street in that waving. We did a, we did a, you know that little, uh, that little uh, choo choo train that goes by. We took that. So I oh, wow, you, I'm on there every time that we appeared on video. Emily would screen grab it from YouTube, and so I think we have a little video cut together of like the nine. Oh, that's times awesome. That. Oh, did you rent a couple great. of go karts? Man, I I couldn't find a go-kart to rent. I wanted to. What we did end up doing is renting. So we were going to rent a golf cart just to drive around for a day because it's fucking hot, dude. It's like it's hot in Texas. It's so much hotter there. Maybe not temperature wise, but because of the humidity, it's just mm -hmm. brutal. And so they were out of golf carts. So we rented a scooter, like a little Vespa, which I haven't ridden since I flipped that one a couple years ago. And... uh <laughs> And got all fucked myself all up, you know, and did that, yeah. that whole thing. And so I was a little nervous about it, but Emily was like, yeah, you'll be fine. It turns out I was fine. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, Emily, Emily made it about three blocks before she was like, I'm too scared to ride with you. And so we had to turn the scooter back in. <laughs> she was not having it. She didn't so, like being so that a scooter was passenger. Worse than the helicopter then, because she didn't turn that around. No, the helicopter, she stuck it out. She did not stick it out with the scooter. She made, she made an hour with the helicopter, maybe 20 minutes with the scooter. What was it like uh, to look at the camera? What did it look like? Oh, we've seen what it looked I, like, I guess. Uh, I can send you pictures, actually. Let did me, you go in the, inside uh, the bar? Yeah. I ate dinner there. Is it cool? Day. Wow. Uh, it was good? Yeah. Like, it's... I, I, I'll be honest. It's... Oh, I, I have so many thoughts. I'm a little scatterbrained. because I let me, let me send these photos <laughs> to you real fast, and then I'll... Okay. Here oh. is... Oh! <laughs> That's the inner feed. Yeah, that was us. Wow. I didn't even know there was an interview. Somebody like caught us eating uh, inside. Do you think that's where that's so Errol odd. Flynn sat? <laughs> <laughs> Here, his favorite table. I'm just going to say these are all the photos I took. I'm fascinated by this. Yeah, this is, I didn't, I really didn't know that there was a feed like that. That really opens things up. I feel like you have a good chance of finding a dumb hat almost any time in the evening with that feed. Wow. Okay, so there's the okay, top left so photo is just where we were sitting at in that other photo you saw of us eating. Food, right out of the gate. Food, awesome. Menu. Like, really good. I had really good Cajun fries. Uh, I had a really... Everything was really good except for the Sloppy Joe. The Sloppy Joe was pretty fucking terrible. It was like, <laughs> it was like sweet and just not good. But I had, a, sure. I had a hot dog that was fantastic. Like, really good. And is that the one you sucked on outside on in front of the camera? Yeah, is that the no? Oh, the there's, that's dog? another story. So you know how sometimes you'll see a guy walk by with a shirt that says "Hey f face" and it looks like the North Face logo. Yeah. 
Uh huh. Walked around the corner to go find out where the people are grabbing the chili dogs, and there's a hot dog vendor right there selling hot dogs in the hay f- face shirt. It's oh. his thing, and he's like, "Really? Yeah, Emily. I I don't have it with me, but Emily, I, I, Emily took a photo of me, me and the." F- face dude standing next to each other and he sell. <laughs> I, I meant to go back and buy one he sells those shirts he's like yeah i sell aprons and shirts i'll sell you one you and met I the north forgot. face face guy i met the north that's face that's incredible face guy. yeah that was the craziest thing is like everybody there i recognized and knew it was weird <laughs> like all the homeless people all the employees everybody i recognized out of the gate you can see i took a photo of the camera right there where it says yeah. Street. it is so hard to see it's so unassuming oh really most people don't know what's there like you can see it in the selfie i took when i was that was yeah. just the selfie i was taking for the yeah live cam that night you I can see it i'd even look up there i don't think you would either and those lights blinded anyway. subtle most people have no idea it's there they really don't huh. uh a couple of other observations sloppy joe's is awesome it that air that block it looks like sloppy joe's is like the center of the universe the way the camera's set up and then mm-hmm. everything kind of gravitates towards that, and it looks like it kind of bleeds off and dies out in the other directions. Not the case. Every block on Duval Street is as crowded and packed as Sloppy Joe's. It's like, it is that crowded everywhere. That place across the street, wow. Rick's, that you can see in the other feed, that place uh-huh. is way busier than Sloppy Joe's and bigger, Really, actually. Sloppy Joe's is busy, don't get me wrong. People and fucking beloved. it. I bought you guys koozies, by the way. I got everybody a koozie. Oh, oh I love it. Thank you so, so much. Yeah, no worries, man. Uh, of course, I'm gonna get you guys stuff. Uh, oh, and Eric, I got for our uh, for our uh, break show set. I got a Sloppy Joe's bar mat. Nice! Wow, yeah, that's awesome! Oh my god, they, they they've really merchandised cool. the shit out of that place. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so like any direction, like you see people peel off to the left or to the right or wherever, they're not going home. They're going to a thousand other restaurants and bars. That place is uh, very lively. Also, the other big observation the uh the big uh illumination i'll say that emily and i had we played two full rounds of sloppy joe's bingo at sloppy joe's one <laughs> under the camera wow that night, and then one across the street wow. i thought we were on camera but we weren't we were just off off camera and the big observation is everybody you see on camera on that sloppy joe's live cam is uh-huh. at least twice as drunk as they look <laughs> <laughs> something about the angle makes people look more sober than they are uh, it's rough on the streets dude when you're looking at those really? people at eye level every single person is stumbling oh, and glassy eyed and hammered from about 8pm on they're all just toasted <laughs> out of their minds dude it, like, it's the first time in my life I realize that the camera doesn't do alcohol justice like <laughs> the pe- people are they look so much more put together when you're looking at the top of their head than they do when you're lo- when you're staring at them in the eyes. Did it's did it's, that make you reevaluate slop o'clock like it, when the time was for uh, no because that was, I I mean I'll be honest slop o'clock is kind of an arbitrary thing anyway but uh it made me appreciate it all more and it made me understand that what I'm watching is actually drunker and funnier than I realized <laughs> if that helps like I'm if like, anything this trip really just bolstered my love of sloppy joes. That's great. I wonder if that keeps going as you get lower. Like if you're sat on the street, does everyone look drunk? <laughs> <laughs> I sat on the street. I did that. Uh, give people oh. one of those so somebody can get that. Uh, it was also, by the way, so, so, so much fun to play on the street. Except mm. that people are fucking drunk and they see you looking at them and everybody. <laughs> it's like Sixth Street, you know, where you like every time you make eye, eye contact with a drunk dude, you're like, oh, well, you know, we'll see how this goes. So there is a bit of that, but it's uh-huh. a pretty it's a pretty happy place. And I assume you I can't actually, scream trip over at people if you're playing there and the moment. Yeah, and you, you can't do that. You can't yell dumb hat and point. <laughs> all, <laughs> stupid <moment>. also, <laughs> Offensive t-shirt. Uh, also, I will say, because Emily would be mad at me if I didn't bring this up. Although, I don't. It's not my story to tell. I don't know how to do it. But according to Emily, she has never seen me nervous and starstruck before. Uh, in any situation, <laughs> but she said when we got to Sloppy Joe's, I turned into a puddle. She said I was just like, I didn't want to go. And she's right. I didn't think about it at the time, but I didn't want to go into the store. I don't want to make eye contact with the employees. I was like nervous. Like uh, there's like a whole like to the right of Sloppy Joe's. Actually, like the the entrance that you see people walk into the like closest to camera is a little store where you can go buy like mm-hmm. T-shirts and shit. And I just I felt so I felt like 
I felt awkward. I felt weird. <laughs> I felt like everybody knew I was this, the guy who made the game that was kind of making fun of them, but not really. <laughs> I was just so nervous. I had, we had to leave and I had to calm down and come back later. That's great. And it was also, it's just like, I just love it so much. Yeah, it's your thing. Yeah. I assume that's how I'm going to be when I see Andrew again. I think so, probably. Starstruck? Yeah, like yeah. when I'm when I'm there at your door trying to screw the Monopoly money to it, I'm just going to be freaking out. I'm going to have to, yeah. have to psych myself well, no, up. We'll, we'll, break, we'll break through that while I'm telling you where the puddle of piss is. I think that'll be like the icebreaker. <laughs> the that'll piss bring breaker. us back. The piss breaker. That's great. I'm so glad. That was one of my main questions is, did this heighten your experience yeah. in watching it? And it sounds yeah. like it absolutely did. And I got to be, I got to say, um, you know, we were doing vacations at that little island, the Isla Mujeres, for a while in Mexico. We haven't been there in a minute. I want to move everything over to Key West. Like, I just want to go back to Key West immediately. And I want you guys to go. Yeah, I'd I love to go. I want us to do a face thing there. That sounds great. I want us to do weekend getaway vacations there. It's just fucking awesome. Oh, I didn't even tell you guys. That's not all I did. Guess what I did? Oh, my God. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. What did you do? Jet I ski. went jet skiing in the ocean. Oh, you went jet skiing? I said it as a joke. Are you serious? In the ocean. Oh my, oh my god. god guys it's different it's so fucking different <laughs> it's so much better what we were doing was not jet skiing jet skiing in the ocean it's a whole other world man well it's surely you can't go 50 dangerous. miles an hour in the ocean you, you can just... you can you can go i, I got up to 46 was the fastest mine went oh, but you waves? can definitely go oh, yeah what if you hit oh what yeah if you, what oh. if you come off a wave do you want to land on a different wave what do you do sometimes you go? you go through a wave you just start <laughs> going so fast shit. you just go through it like you pierce it it's fucking wild it's fucking wild so you're an we ocean did, jet skier now. Yeah, you're dude. An, wow. And the tour we did, we got on jet skis and we did the entire fucking island. Like we circled so cool. Key West in jet skis, which means I went through two oceans on jet skis. Damn. Wow. It was fucking awesome. So you like now, circled Duval Street? Yeah, I did. I, I did. I totally did. That's awesome. Yeah. And I got to see all kinds of crazy like... They call people who live on the water there, they call it living off the hook. And it's kind, mm. of a, it's kind of a derogatory term. It's kind of an insult. And I didn't quite understand it until I was out there on the jet ski. There's like parts of Key West that look like Waterworld, where it's just like old boats that don't sail anymore that are just stuck. And there's people that have built like corrugated metal like huts on top no of way. them. And just live there, living off the hook. And there's like, that's you, great. you jet ski around them and you really that. are like, it's like post-apocalyptic. It's fucking wild. Oh, that's awesome. Did you see yeah. Dennis Hopper? God, I wish. <laughs> I looked for him. <laughs> uh, anyway. What, uh, so do you think your lake experience now, is that going to be weakened? Can you go back to your standard jet ski? Like, will this change that for you, you think, now that you've experienced the ocean lifestyle? Uh, the lake experience had already been lessened a bit just because we'd done it so much. And there's only... I imagine the swan, too. Probably. Yeah, yeah, the swan, too. Well, we've done it so much, and Lake Austin's quite small. So it's like, you basically, okay. every time we rent a jet ski, we go, okay, let's go from here to the end, and then to the other end, and back. And you just do a full loop, and then you're done. And so that gets old after, like, I don't know, 20 times doing did you, it. So. Did you... um? almost hit any other kinds of dead bloated wildlife when you're in the ocean no <laughs> no i didn't but uh some people did see a giant sea turtle uh when we were coming in i just oh, that's it. cool uh, <laughs> <laughs> i want to go i want to go to key west and i want to jet ski on the ocean dude yeah, that sounds fun it's fucking awesome it's not any more expensive than jet skiing in the regular land uh, or in the in lakes <laughs> and uh it's way more thrilling and uh, yeah, and anyway, so Key West is, is just, it's better than I remembered it. It's nicer than I remembered it. It's, uh, it's Sloppy Joe's is better than I could have imagined it. It's incredibly, and I mean this with all sincerity, it's all very charming. Like it's, I remembered it being kind of trashy and like trashy, a little trashy. <laughs> Key West being just kind of trashy. Side of trashy. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely I the there. vibe I got looking at the feed. And it's yeah. it's there is a, it is still a little trashy, but it's so much more charming than that. And, uh, oh, and that's it's great. Just, it's just wonderful. Yeah, really great. Place. I love to hear that. Really great. And so uh, I, I I hope that I hope that our sloppy Joe's future is bright and and long. Oh, that was a fast this hour. This was a fun episode. Yeah, that was good. I missed you guys. Missed yeah, you I too. missed you guys. I didn't really get to any of my stuff. That was lovely. Oh shit! Next time. Next time. Next next, next week. week. Episode one sixty five. Uh, tune in the Gavin episode.
Ooh. I mean, I, I hope to have, I hope to have some stuff to present from the lab, but that's probably my main really? thing next time. Oh, yep. That's exciting. Yes, indeed. Very excited. Hopefully, audience, you'll tune in next week for episode 165, the Gavin episode. He's been in the lab. He's going to blow your mind. And if you saw us at RTX, thank you for coming out. Thank you for spending your time and your money supporting f Face. And if I ran into you in Key West and took photos with you, hey, it was nice to see you. Thanks for doing that. And uh, we're uh, maybe I'll see you next vacation. And if you listen to this and you hear me talking right now, thanks for listening to this and uh, whatever else. Bye. Bye. Which thumbsticks will Andrew be on? We won't see it. <laughs> well, come we'll on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. Major League fan Jack here with a look at next week's episode of Face. Andrew broke it again. Gavin has some interesting storage options. Those shoes have no toes. It's a pool noodle monstrosity. Vegas was ungodly hot. It's a digital crabs table. And once again, Andrew does not eat the pencil. All that and more on next week's episode of Face.